they took to the satellite airwaves and created a sound that changed the way potheads did radio. Sure, potheads have been on the radio, but for the hosts of Comedy Central Radio's The Bonfire, all was not what it seemed to be on the air. When they were live, their chemistry was undeniable. Fans became rabid for seamless riffs, but off-air. The lives of hosts Jay Okerson and Dan Soder were not wine and roses. Drugs, alcohol, and just plain ego would threaten the future of the show many times. Listeners, or campers as they would become lovingly known as, had no idea how fitting a show name it truly was. As you'll soon hear, the bonfire was not only a name, but a symbol for a relationship between two friends turned co-hosts whose extravagant lifestyles would almost see their show go up in flames. With exclusive interviews with the hosts, the crew, lovers, and more, you'll hear how high the fires of the bonfire danced and how those flames turned to ash. Would the show pick back up the heat it had in the beginning, or would the flames of friendship forever extinguish? From their very first show on the air to today and beyond, you'll hear it all on Behind the Bonfire. On July 27, 2015, comedians Jason Big J. Okerson of Philadelphia and Daniel Zero to Sixty Soder from Colorado broadcast their first show on Comedy Central Radio on Sirius XM Satellite Radio. They called it The Bonfire. Little did the public know that what happened on the first show would say so much about the off-air lives of the two comedians. It was 6 p.m. Eastern on a Monday night, and the two excited co-hosts began their inaugural show. It's a new day, and this is The Bonfire with Big Jokerson and Dan Soder on Comedy Central Radio Series XM 95. It finally fucking happened. It's unreal. Remember all of our um, married for 40 year fights on the phone we've had <laughs> over this? It was, uh, <laughs> our, we had several conversations where there were things texted like, uh, this isn't us, bro. <laughs> it's so, this isn't us, man. I don't think people realize how catty men can be, <laughs> especially when business is involved. Because we were fucking, you and I have never fought in our friendship. No. Ever. It's not based on that. It's never. It's based on us getting high and making each other laugh. Yeah. A great opening to their first chance show or so they thought bonfire host big j okerson so the first show there was so much uh excitement tension it was such a long time coming and we get this opportunity we were so excited to to pick our intro song and let it out there to the world and how professional this radio show was about to be and then we start just ripping off a good i think almost 20 minutes 20 minutes of just gold Fun, laughing. It's our monumental first time doing bonfire, and we're gonna get it out there for the world. And then, of course, uh, we get a call that says we have not been on the air the entire time. Bonfire producer Lou Witzke. I knew right away we weren't on the air, but I didn't want to stop them because they were doing so well. So I called engineering and had them try to fix the problem. When they couldn't fix it, I had to get Jacob, who was white as a ghost. After I told him. You got to tell the guys they're not on the air. But even like, you know, uh, new Jack. We're, we're off the air. Are you got what? We're off the air. Technical difficulties. Bonfire host, Dan Soder. What Jay didn't know was I'd been up for five days doing a mixture of Angel Dust and LSD. By the time I walked into the bonfire, I thought we were already in syndication, which I heard never happened. I'll tell you something else. I've also been up for 15 days now. I've been up since that first show, and I'm whacked out of my fucking mind. What's 21 minutes? <laughs> it's 21 minutes on a year. <laughs> Hi, it's the Bonfire on Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J Okerson. <laughs> Holy shit. We did a show. We already were doing we, a show. Yeah, let's, I mean, pull the curtain a little bit on this was uh we started this thing on time <laughs> <laughs> 6 p.m big j and i looked at each other like here we go buddy we knuckled we knuckled <laughs> down <laughs> like we were fucking top gun pilots yeah <laughs> one more time into the great darkness <laughs> goose <laughs> see you on the other end brother <laughs> <laughs> you're my gun man i know you always got my back i even had the inner uh voice telling me i'm like this is going really good man <laughs> really funny shit there were four people that were so happy with that radio show and then someone just goes you're you've never been on air and we're like what yeah so we got waved down it's like that's guys 
None of that went out to anybody. <laughs> Actually, the first the first words were, "You guys aren't on air." So I'm like, "Oh, we got cut off." And I thought it was some cool like yeah, we the doing... government was shutting us down like uh like turn up the vol- pump up the volume yeah they're like guys this this pirate radio that's not pirate radio <laughs> yeah. but talk actually, hard this paid subscribing radio station and uh, no it turns out turns out that none of it <laughs> dude that was great none of it played whatsoever which is fantastic and well what? it's official buddy we're here it finally happened it finally after, happened even after a twenty five minute delay I do believe we are live we got a, there's a lot of thumbs up happening around the room unless they're just fucking with us to be like let's just let these idiots go for two hours <laughs> there's oh there's so many thumbs up there's, I think this is golden. Dude, they, they even changed the lighting in the production, and they're like the little production studio. It went from cool, fun producer like oh. Frazier, Roz on Frazier, into hospital lighting. Yeah, it really <laughs> went full fluorescence in there, <laughs> and that's how you know someone's gonna get yelled at. Oh my god! The fluorescence, come on! Goes, hey, get out of this sexy vibe, Venus fly trap. <laughs> <laughs> at six twenty-one p.m. Eastern, the technical difficulties worked out. The bonfire was officially off and running. And over the next few weeks, Jay and Dan would not only realize they were making people laugh, but they were quickly becoming the voices for some of the most important issues in America. It was a lot to absorb for the new hosts, but Big Jay took it in stride. For Dan Soder, it was another story altogether. Bonfire host, Big Jay Okerson. Oh, Chet Hayes. My excitement... To show Dan for the first time, Chet Hayes, I, I couldn't believe he was unaware of it. I thought he was a real uh, historian of Hank's knowledge, but he did not know that, that Tom Hanks has the son who believes he is a white rapper. You know, the saying goes, if you believe you're a white rapper, you are a white rapper. And uh, just the sheer joy we had in, in learning that experience together. I was happy. It was good to see Dan laughing. Because I, I started noticing at this point he wasn't really sleeping a lot, and he was uh, he was sniffling in studio a whole bunch, and I thought his clothes were a little baggy. I, I didn't want to make a whole thing about it, so I just kind of let it go and enjoyed the fact that it seemed like Dan was back, back in the game and, and laughing at Chet Hayes. Hey. You seen on the Tom Hanks rapping son? No. Come on. No. Oh my God. We Don't do to... this to Tom Hanks' legacy. No. Well, I love dude, his this son is called... all. I mean, this is all over the place. But I mean, yeah, Chet Hayes, dude, really. Take a look at this. Tom Hanks' son. He is dumb as a doornail. <laughs> all those fancy schools and all that sweet Rita Wilson mothering that I assume is the sweetest of the sweet. It has to be. Your, Your dad's, dad's fourth <laughs> 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 yeah. Is he like me? He's like, nah, son, I'm a man. <laughs> is he like, like I am? Nah. You spit fire like I do, yo dad. Yo dad, would they stop my dad when I was running? But I ain't stopping. <laughs> he just references. How do you not reference being Forrest Gump's son? Got in shot the, in the buttocks. Ah, <laughs> what a failure of Tom Hanks and his wife. At I one, mean, how do you just let it? I mean, uh, look, I, I should maybe that's unfair. Yeah. That might be unfair, but I mean, like. How do you not see that happy? One day your son was just like, yo, pops, I don't even know like that. <laughs> Look who's in the kitchen. Oh, yeah, you going to do something, Forrest? <laughs> you going to do something? I wish you would. I flex on you, Forrest. Yo, someone's about to have to save Private Ryan because I'm about to knock you the fuck out, Dad. <laughs> fuck you, Mom. I wish you was that mermaid. Yeah. I wish Daryl Hannah was my mom. And I don't give a fuck. I call her bathtub mom. <laughs> we keep her right in that bathtub. I wouldn't even eat fish tacos because I would think it would be disrespectful. Yo, Mom, you got the first name of a fat girl. I never <laughs> met a skinny Rita. <laughs> Ritas are usually only good at two things, fighting other bitches and making waffles. <laughs> 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 waffles. And hey, you make a pretty sick waffle, moms. <laughs> hey, but for real though, that custom waffle maker that dad got from the president of Spain, shit's dope. <laughs> Yo, Pops, Apollo 13 was dope. <laughs> that shit was the sickness. Yo, I feel like that Christmas that year, you launched me into the atmosphere and then brought me back before I suffocated. <laughs> <laughs> Son, I want you to have a great time at prom. Here's a couple dollars for your pocket. Go, Yo, Dad, give me some money to get a hotel. I'm going to try to break this bitch. Bitch off. <laughs> Yo, Pippin is as Pippin does, right? <laughs> He's like, I can't, I can't fucking, I can't get behind this. Chat? Uh, Pippin is as Pippin does should be a t-shirt. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit.
it. Bonfire host, Dan Soder. Oh, the Chet Hayes episode? I was in a real bad place. I uh, had been walking the streets at night, muttering to myself, trying to pick fights, homeless people, regular people, whoever I could find. I uh, started seeing signs of uh, mental degradation, just pure insanity. Uh, I was smoking methamphetamines at that point, and I uh, actually knew Chet from uh, a party weekend we had in Palm Springs. And uh, when Jay played me the music, I, I thought he was actually talking just to me. So giving me instructions on who to kill and who to save uh, with a machete that I had bought <clears throat> up in Canada around the same time. Yeah. So it's your boy Chet Hayes. I'm in the studio video? finishing up the next tape, Get Hayes. Um, just my homie just showed me this beat and I mean, it's like unanimous decisions. Yo, Absolute the fire so I Yo, go the, and yo, the right beat now. wrote these lyrics. Uh, yeah, uh, it's <laughs> yo, it's the hooch. Uh, it's the hooch. Yeah. Check it out. Uh, uh, just go off. Pimpin' is pimpin' does. Yo, yeah. got that private school life. Yeah. Stab you with the ski pole in your pee pole. Hey, creepo, I'm sharp like the space needle. Nobody's oh. equal to me, cause I'm the fucking illest. So listen while I tell you what the deal is. And if you don't feel this, fuck you, cause I'm a kill this. I'm a young gun, you are old bitch, like your name's Phyllis. Shit, I told you I'm the realest. And if you talking shit, then what the fuck you talking about, Willis? I rock Gotti oh. Wing, I like the Saudi sting. Step to me, get beat down like Rodney King by four cops. Bust a north like four sides, from four glocks. Freestyling like I'm on the Venice Bowl. Damn it. Or the board walks of Venice. Right. I ain't no dog. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I want to hate it more. But uh, it's just like, it's just so like affected. Here's the thing. You can't fucking tell me you're going to stab me or fuck me up when yeah. I know your dad, that your dad has made me feel more emotions than my own dad. He's fantastic. Tom well, Hanks is also gonna, my dad. How, I say, Chet Hayes, how are you disrespecting our father, Tom yeah, Hanks, right yeah. now? <laughs> Jay and I were raised on your father's movies. How are you going to act like, ah! What you making for dinner? Oh, uh, your father's filming in Tunisia, but he'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Yo, that bitch-ass motherfucker going to take the copter? Yo, why's my room not made up? Where's Dolores? <laughs> The, what do you mean you fought her? She been my she been my nanny since I was seven. Braca, where's my Jamaica nanny? <laughs> Wanna see my mom? Wanna be with her? Straight, let her know I'm a champion. <laughs> that would have been great. That's the only excuse. If he would have came, rude boy. <laughs> if Chase would have came out like a Sean Paul, <laughs> just give me the line and pass me the draws. It's the boy Chet Hayes. <laughs> Why do you talk like that? It's raised by Jamaica nanny. I'm iron like a lion in Zion, man. <laughs> With the blood clot. <laughs> but it wasn't all back rubs and butt sex for Dan and Jay. As their listening audience grew and fans across the country hoped to get a glimpse of them at stand-up shows, the two hosts would soon find that not every member of the listening public appreciated their honesty. Oh, Brad in Seattle, talk to us. You're on the bonfire, buddy. What's up, Brad? How's it going? Hi, Brad. Seattle's in a good mood now because of all that legal What's weed. Up, man? Yeah. Seattle's always in a good mood, man. You're Smoke a blunt, get ready to go. It's good stuff. Fucking <laughs> 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 You're like, I, Brad's the kind of guy I want to go whitewater rafting with. If I just heard Brad talking, they're like, what do you want to name this guy? I'd be like, that's ah, Brad. That's a Brad. <laughs> we call him a Brad. <laughs> Smoke a blunt, check out some tasty waves. I don't know, bro. Maybe get a good <laughs> fish taco. And then wear, go down to Ron John, pick up a new shirt, and just get out on the waves, man. <laughs> Fucking awesome, bro. <laughs> I just love Cuba, to, having some food. I learned a couple things. Was, I was in the Marines for like two years, and they were just like harsh in my vibe. I, so I, I didn't do good in school, but as like an adult, I like to learn. Dude, people say, the number one thing they say about me all the time is I brighten their days. Whenever I'm around, I super brighten their days. I did some personal training, but I did it different. I don't like to insult, man. I'm all about building up. So my ex-girlfriend actually got killed in a car accident about seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been trying just to hang out. You know, I just like focus on the positive energy. And every time I feel that sadness creep up, I'm like, dude, Ashley's looking over you and she's not an angel. She's an angel on earth and now she's truly an angel on your shoulder. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, Brad. Sorry, Brad. <laughs> What's up, buddy?
Yeah, so let's get honest for a second. You guys are a bunch of, like, 350-pound, like, fucking obese guys talking about watching people piss. Like, that's super fucked up, man. You guys are probably getting paid fuck all to sit around all day and talk on the radio like a bunch of assholes. Maybe you should do something with your lives. Like, oh, I, I don't think know you... if you fucking contribute or something like that. Okay. You know, like, it's just, just flip through stations and listen to you guys just talk about, you know, how you're getting off to your circle jerk audience, a bunch of fucking 20-year-old kids. <laughs> a bunch of middle-aged men that don't fuck all of their lives. Oh, dude, you're like, great. I like that you're... Hey, hold on. Hey, uh, Spicoli, hold on real quick. Let him roll. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Brad. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Brad. Brad. Oh. oh. That's that really bummed me out because I really wanted to hear. It said he had a story about catching a girl he knew masturbating. Did, was that all a lie? Uh, I guess that was a lie. Yeah. Would he, did he did not like our impression? Or for the record, I'm not probably crazy far from 350 pounds. I mean, it was in sight at one point in my life. <laughs> Determined not to change, the bonfire hosts pressed on. All was well on the bonfire when, on November 10th, 2015, Big J Okerson would be deeply affected by a revelation that would change his life forever. We have, we have Tony Danza tap dancing. Sings and tap dances. I mean, that's Love tough. may be blind, but the stars were aligned in my favor. What a dumb, confident guinea. <laughs> he really is. I've just met this guy before. Not Tony Danza, but that guy. Oh, Tony Danza. Boy, did we learn a lot about him. Just the idea that how blown away we were that the man could come in and just like believe in himself so much and believe he could find an audience for the nonsensical jibber jabber he's throwing out there singing the standards tap dancing around of course this uh time all brought along the angela uh bits the uh just a lot of classic stuff that people now know and love from the bonfire things people yell out when me and dan are touring around uh, it's just become such a part of the show. On an unrelated note, around the time, I started noticing Dan really, just really looking emaciated and just, he came in, I, I think he hadn't showered in a few days, and uh, he was nodding a bunch, and then I was like, I better kick something in the high gear here, and that's when I went on the tangent and started doing the Tony Danza, you know, sings the greatest hits. And uh, it really, it, it, it almost pumped life back into his eyes. It, his lips, if I can say, went from like a, a weird violet purplish, like back to pink. And I, did I save his life that day? I don't know. I don't want to be called a hero. I just want to say uh, I was worried at that point pretty bad about my friend Dan. Guys in Philly, right? Hey, I should make my own album because I can croon like those other shitty Italian singers of the day. I don't Boopily dis- boop and a how do you do <laughs> Thanksgiving? <laughs> Love is in the air. Grabbing a lady and spin her around before you bring her home to a folks place. Bro, my origin story is so mid original. <laughs> Yo, I used to listen to Sinatra when I was a baby. <laughs> Booba da do at the pizzeria where my ma works. Going to get ices under the moon. You're a girl. <laughs> Come over and watch me cure my own pepperoni. I got a temper you'll find out real soon. <laughs> Talking through my teeth. Letting you know. I mean, is it just that's that's shitty tap dancing. It's a hundred percent confidence. <laughs> oh my god, he's just walking around. There's one talent on that stage, and he's playing the piano, and he has had his head down. He doesn't have to look at the keys anymore. He's not. He's just. Like, I'm not gonna see her drinking Tony Danza, oh, entertaining oh, himself. Wait, go back to that spin. Oh yeah. Shubala dupe, here I go once again. I'm athletic and a talent. Every year I get a brand new Ford Escape. <laughs> Who would have bet that this pastor would get to start over? I've been writing letters to Camaro asking them to come back. Bonfire host, Dan Soder. If there was ever a push off a cliff on an episode of a bonfire, it was the Tony Danza episode. Uh, A little piece of history that I had saved from Jay was when I was a child, I was beaten without mercy to Who's the Boss episodes. So the sound of Tony Danza's voice can trigger 
what only top psychologists can call severe PTSD. Uh, I, at that point, was weighing 97 pounds. I was living off nothing more than just handfuls of trail mix and pure methamphetamines. I was using a, an extension cord uh, tied around my waist as a belt. Things had gotten bad. None of my family was talking to me. But I was still myself on the bonfire in a weird way, like a shell of a man. I didn't know that uh, uh, I was going to meet salvation so soon. Yo, I love my mother more than anybody. <laughs> Fist fight you over a parking spot. Drakkar is a timeless smell. Why did it go away? Pictures of Jesus while I jerk off. <laughs> no, it's not a pepper. It's a horn. <laughs> Oh, Loyalty's the most important quality. <laughs> Better to be feared than respected. <laughs> uh, I know this guy. That's my favorite. I know this guy. <laughs> I just know this guy. I met him. Rocco. Come on, baby. You can do it, too. <laughs> Never got to really hit high notes. Yeah. If you start 12 octaves low. <laughs> Shuba la boo do we wah! Whoa, man, did, gr did glass almost crack? Shuba la wee! <laughs> Razzmatazz, dinner's not on the table. <laughs> you love them all. All the hits <laughs> from Big J Ocus and the smooth sounds of the boy from Philly. Draw me a bath before I bust your mouth wide open. That one's called Loving My Wife. Because your whore mother's living here for free. And the classic Family Ties. <laughs> I should have married your sister instead of just fucking her. Ah, the old single man's walk. <laughs> <laughs> you remember tying this classic slide. <laughs> All of Big J's. Where's the remote you Cunt. Living room love. They're all there on the double disc. If I could build a time machine, I'd go back in time and kick your father in the nuts so he never had you. Oh. This one's going out to you, Pops. And live cuts. <laughs> like daddy's love. I'm ripping down your daughter's vag every day. Shredding it like Pischetti. <laughs> Even the X-rated hits are on there. <laughs> the Bonfire is a close-knit family. And like any family... They fight. Perhaps no one would come to know this better than extended family member Steve Hugo Varley. I was covering for Merc Face on the phones, and sometimes I zone out during any show I'm working on. And I didn't mean to zone out here. I think I was taking a caller, and somehow Motley Crue comes up, and Big J was asking me if I knew names of the band members, and I said I think I knew Tommy Lee, and I think he's in Motley Crue. But I think Tommy Lee is a drummer of Miley Crew. Yes, correct. And I didn't know any of the other band member names, and they kept saying it, I guess. I didn't catch it. So they, they said Nikki Sticks is in the band, and I thought, I guess I thought it was Nikki Six they were saying. I wasn't, it sounds so similar, Sticks, Six. I don't know, but I think it is Nikki Sticks. I don't know what he plays in the band. Pretty sure they were saying the guitarist, but it was scary because Jay got really angry. And who am I? I'm this 24-year-old just covering for Merc Face. Hugo, they call me. And I didn't know what to do. I was, I was freaked out that he was going to jump over the board and, like, attack me. So it was a great learning experience for me in radio. I had a feeling that's what you were trying to say here. Let me tell you, uh, Hugo knows nothing about anything so much. Yeah, Merc Face Andy is that he dead wrote, that, he, that, that what he wrote is, quote-unquote, crying like a bitch. Next words, is by Nikki Sticks. You don't know. You don't S -T -I -C -K -S. know. S T I C K S. Do you not know Molly Crew? Hugo, get on the goddamn mic. Hugo, you don't know Molly Crew at all. I know them. I, I don't know who Nikki Sticks is. Name it's the members. Not, there is name, no Nikki Sticks. Name the members of Motley Crew. <laughs> name the goddamn what? members of Motley Crew. One of the guys was on Serial Life, the lead singer. I know. Oh, come that. on, dude. This is a I lob, Hugo. Dude, this is a lob. Do it. Who is in Motley Crew? All Crew? of them. You can name all of them. It's a lob. Oh, Tommy Lee. Okay. This drummer. Yes. Keep going. Oh my God! I I can't name any. Talking about him. We said know. his name eight know. times today. You were not listening. Vince Neil. Okay. Vince Neil, lead singer. Okay. Keep going. Um. Wait, Christine. No. <laughs> I'm gonna go with 
Nikki Sticks. Oh, Hugo, how many oh, times? God. How many times? <laughs> God damn, Hugo. How many times out loud do I have to tell you it's not Nikki Sticks? It's Nikki Sticks. It's six. Nikki Sticks. Fucking Nikki, asshole. Nikki six. It's this whole conversation's built off of me saying it's not Nikki Sticks, Nikki Six, and you call him Nikki Sticks three more times Jesus. like you're trying to fight me. It, this is like your version of Paschetti. It's like it's spaghetti. He's like, yeah, Paschetti. God damn it. God damn it, Hugo. Crying like a bitch is by Nikki Sticks. It's not even about. You couldn't understand anything that Trevor said. <laughs> Trevor, we appreciate your knowledge. Perhaps no other individual has captured the hearts and minds of Big J. Okerson and Dan Soder and their fans. As much as Corey Feldman, longtime fans of Feldman's acting work, Dan and Jay would learn there were many more levels to the Hollywood star than they had ever known. They would come to call him Feld Dog. And over the coming months, fans clamored for their discussions of all things Corey. At the same time, co-host Dan Soder's life was spiraling. Bonfire host, Big J. Okerson. Oh, Corey Feldman. I mean, how much joy has this guy brought uh, me, Dan, and the campers? You know, I, I really started digging into the Corey Feldman stuff to show uh, Dan uh, an example of a person living a cleaner lifestyle, uh, getting his life on track, you know, being a, a movie star, someone who really, really has it together. And then as we start finding out more and more that Corey Feldman himself is also a pretty troubled individual, while there's no alcohol and drugs, there's the whole sort of sex cult deal he's got going on and these crazy angels. And if you recall, it all kind of dials back to this guy saying that he was sexually abused. Uh, he gives no names, no facts, no stories. But uh, if you see the way he dresses, I sort of believe it. And it brought so much joy at the time that I really started seeing Dan make a real turnaround uh, in his behavior, in his uh, in his look. He, his, his skin looked good. He looked healthy. Uh, he went to the dentist, I remember, around that time. So his teeth got cleaned up. He was doing great. And then, mysteriously... After that Wednesday, we lost contact with him for about four days. Just completely off the grid. It was, it was the weirdest thing. Oh, it was a Corey Feldman episode. Oh, brother. That was gas on the fire. Why does uh, Corey Feldman say pedophilia is Hollywood's biggest problem? I want to see his take on that. Is he trying to tell us that Steven Spielberg did something to his butthole? I hope so. Ate it. But being famous so young, he says, caused serious damage to him and his friends. Yes. Do you feel like you missed out on a normal childhood? <laughs> what childhood? <laughs> I don't know Wait, what that Lou. means. That's Lou. very sheenish, like actually. <laughs> Lou, it's got to be a drop. <laughs> <laughs> what childhood? Not just those looking at the, the bonfire. <laughs> also, some with far more sinister motives. I can tell you that the number one problem in Hollywood was and is and always will be pedophilia. Pause it. Also a drop. Yeah. <laughs> I want these all to be drops. The biggest problem at Sirius Satellite Radio is, has been, and always will be pedophilia. <laughs> Jacob, get your hands off me. I'm taking back the night. Yeah. I'm going to get a haircut like Lo Jennifer Lopez in enough. <laughs> and punch you. Fucking legend of Billy Jean it. Yeah. Fair is fair. Yeah. Keep your goddamn mitts off me. Jacob, you want to have another shirtless hug with me to talk about production meetings? He's <laughs> abused him and his best friend, the late child actor Corey Haim. His co-star in The Lost Boys. Well, what happens if my mom is dating the head vampire? Feldman says the trauma of that pedophilia contributed to Haim's death. If there's one person. Well, first off, what a way to throw your friend under the bus after he's dead. <laughs> he's dead. He goes. Also, he goes. It's a pretty tough life. <laughs> and used to get boo food by old men. <laughs> <laughs> you know a guy, just a guy pulling his dick out of the pee hole of his director's pants, his big pants with the, high, with the knee high boots. I'm gonna fuck your friend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, everybody, cut. Feldman, see me in my office. Same, alone time. <laughs> but what a way for your friend to be dead. He's gonna say, so he goes, pedophile is Hollywood's biggest problem, but he's only talking about Corey Haim. He goes, no, I mean they tried to get me, but uh, I was like, no. <laughs> but Haim was just fucking chugging producer dick by the fives. I was too strong, and they said that my 
<laughs> I mean, they tried, but I kicked so much ass, it was crazy. <laughs> but, but they got him, and boy, did they get him. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we, I mean, you can see by my moves that so I can move pretty good. So, I you mean, know, that's a side, side thing to get away. Not all Hames thing. Yeah. Hames was more of a people pleaser. <laughs> I, got good, I got good east to west movement, <laughs> which I think threw off a lot of these old producers. <laughs> They're used to a lot of downhill running. They're prepared for that. They know how to block that. <laughs> He's just going to dump concentrations of Hame getting fucked. Mogul. And that person needs to be exposed, but unfortunately I can't be the one to do it. But the person that knows who did it and knows who he is, is watching right now, I guarantee you. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a circle of... He's like, he I'm could. about to drop a bomb right now. Yeah. I don't Corey Hame be... was fucked so many times. <laughs> uh, I couldn't sleep at night because just next door, just to hear him, just balls to butt. <laughs> and I know you're out there. You fucked my friend right into an addiction. <laughs> I even had to do blow just to comfort him. <laughs> See, what this, this particular producer didn't know is I've taken seven years of Aikido at that yeah. point. <laughs> I was pretty trained in Krav Maga. I didn't Krav Maga before I knew my own name. I always walk around with a bow staff, prepared for such situations. Are you familiar with the spring-loaded baton? Well, I had all of them sewn into the <laughs> arms of my jackets. <laughs> the spring-loaded baton. Go ahead, I want to hear more and, about him. And that again. person happens to be a Hollywood mogul. And that person needs to be exposed, but unfortunately I can't be the one to do it. But the person that knows who did it, and knows who he is, is watching right now, I guarantee you. Hmm. Yeah. Intriguing. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's, uh, thanks for nothing. Throw the whole camera crew out here. You gave us nothing. You said it happened. I know it. He that knows it, but he'll never know. Been more patronizing. Yeah, well, Oof, uh, you are a. Uh, every time I think, there's no more news coming out of you, buddy. You, <laughs> yeah. he's like, you just fucking that, fart at another gem. He's like, that, and that Hollywood mogul is waiting for this YouTube video to load right now. Uh, yeah, great story. So, <laughs> is there going to be a Goonies too? That was basically cool story, bro. That was exactly as, what that was. said as intriguing. Corey intriguing. Feldman just said that him and Cor uh, Feldog and Hamster were getting fucking <laughs> nailed by directors, and it's got less views than, like, you know, like, adorable chihuahua. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Corey Haim taking so much dick. Now he's in the dirt. I can really talk about it. <laughs> well, one producer got us by telling us that's how we would actually become vampires. <laughs> and he said that was our protection, which I didn't believe it, but you know, Corey. <laughs> and I, I used to tell him, sorry, bro, you're getting fucked so much, but there's nothing I could do about it. I tried to, I tried to teach him a, uh, an escape from a wrist lock, but he never listened to me. Dude, seriously, if a guy holds a gun on you, all you gotta do, really? What you do is you grab the elbow. Twist the gun, and saw him on Pressure point. Now he's pointing the gun back at himself. Now you're in control. The prey's become the, the hunter. <laughs> the, and the hunter has become the hunter. <laughs> Corey, I can only give you the lessons. You must apply them. Bonfire host, Dan Soder. I thought I'd stabilized, is what they call it. But turns out I was just in a deep, deep tailspin. Uh, everything was around me felt like it was within reach of my fingertips but it wasn't oh man i was selling everything i could get bonfire shirts that i was just making with sharpies and just handing them out to people i was telling them we were seven days a week that i mean this is an irrational amount of radio to do it was it was getting pretty bad i knew it was bad when i started taking mountain dew baths uh i could feel my pores open up and i knew when i got high off methamphetamines it was sinking in more and uh well dante said the inferno's nine levels all right i think i heard that once i don't know my hell was another six long months remember 222 is to this day the most famous tribute song ever written by Corey feldman to his late close friend Corey haim a worried Jay Okerson was wondering if one day he would have to pen his own tribute song about his friend, Dan. Oh, the 222 song. Who can forget that? I mean, I don't want to give too much away. I, I assume we're going to play the clip here, but it's just this connection that Corey Feldman felt to Corey Haim. And it's, it's, it's just unnatural for two men to feel that way. But it's probably what made me... Uh, concern myself but that I was dialing back too much from Dan because at this time it, it had just gone full tilt he was showing up late he was showing up disheveled he started smoking right in the studio 
just really not giving a fuck wearing t-shirts that would kind of like say mean things about all of us in the studio like jacob jacob le queer he was like oh no it's a it's a french company i, I don't think that's true it was clearly drawn on his own shirt with sharpie i'm on the road and i'm seeing people making their own bonfire shirts and they said no dan soder gave this to me on the streets i was unaware of it as turning any revenue on merch at this point but i guess it was happening i quite frankly i remember i remember my friend dan forget remembering 222 i miss my friend dan bonfire host dan soder between the women, the drugs, and all the money I was pulling in from alternative bonfire merchandise, that's what I called it. It was straight black market stuff. I was just selling stuff that Jay was leaving behind, cigarette butts, pictures of him sleeping. I would break in, and I'm not proud of who I became. The 222 bit, really, that was my cry for help for Jay, for anybody. Jacob, Lou, I picked a fight with Andy, and uh, he handled me pretty convincingly. Uh, I was high on meth. I said, that's not a real beard, and I went to grab it, and he, uh, well, he beat the shit out of me. I mean, the guy pulled my beard, and it hurt. What did you want me to do? The one part of Merc Face you don't mess with is the face. Those were, uh, those were not good times. But I think at the time, he had beat me right. What I didn't see coming next is what hurt more than my own addiction. Now, Jacob, you're our Corey Feldman specialist. Breaking bonfire news with Corey Feldman specialist. Yeah. I, first of all, I found a Corey, Haim, Corey Feldman tribute song to Corey Haim. That's what That's you found. It's called Remember 222. Two, two. I don't know what that means. What is two, can we find out? Before we look, can we find out what 222 two, two means? I'll tell you what. Means? How about this? We want you to put it in context if we hear it. But let's play the song, and then, Jacob, if you oh, can, okay. if you have the Bing capabilities, what? can you find out what it means? I Unless he was born, was Corey Haim born? Someone factored this. Was he born February 2nd in the year 2? In the year 20. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you understand? Corey Hayden was old. He's a wizard. He's like Jack. He's like a Highlander. He's like Jack Nicholson in uh in The Shining. You've <laughs> always been here for the whole time. <laughs> this is a, Love, this is a picture from yeah. two. Nine, <laughs> is, that, is, that a, yeah. is that a cave painting of Corey Hayden? Oh, weird! It's the three buffalo, and then a, what looks to be Corey Haim. Is that Corey Haim? Play the song, Jacob. That is everything I hoped it would be. Go back. Take it back a little bit. I need it back to that first line again. Listen, in all due respect, this is a man's song about his dead friend. Remember back when we were kids? Jesus Christ. I've never written a song uh, with any kind of realness to it. All right, hypothetically, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. Let's say you and I, Big J and Dan Soder. Should we write tribute songs for Corey Haim? Should we write, or I was going to say <laughs> tribute songs for each other. Oh, yes. Let's do that. That's okay. way better. Yeah. Because let's first off, let's break down this one though. Back when we were kids. Now it has to be to the beat of this song. <laughs> Remember when we first met, smoking butts outside the club. Remember when the contract wouldn't go through? We were mad at each other, but we stuck like glue. But we always kept good demeanors when we spoke on the phone. <laughs> Sometimes we got mad, and then we cooled it off with a game of Madden. <laughs> I want to say for the record, I was never mad at you, ever. Ever. I was never mad at you, Jay. I love you. I love you so much. I love you. Let's listen to another. Let's keep going, Jacob. It's brought us together. Remember back when we were kids, laughing at the things we did. Working harder than we should, but though we knew what was good, made the most of every day. We altered our reality. Reality. I remember when I didn't acknowledge you were getting molested by that producer. <laughs> remember when they gave me hush money. <laughs> when Corey Haim died, he actually had the face of like when you turn to a vampire in the Lost Boys. Oh. He had an actual face, like shadowy cheeks. Oh. This poor son of a bitch. He's already in the ground. 
Is it possible? Can we get the lyrics transcribed? There's got to be a site. If you type in Remember 222 lyrics, yes, you'll get them. Oh my Christ, dude. Stop the song. Just. I'm flustered. I mean, I'm emotional. We just found out, first of all, I'm emotional. I need a second. Those lyrics were. Just, remember back when we were young, we would have so much fun. Yeah, do you have a fucking five year old writing a school poem? Do you I like to you see know, him do, freestyle. Do you, know, do, do you know what 222 two, two is? Yeah. What is it, bro? This is a description of what 222 two, two, this is. This is this makes me worry about another grown man. I'm yeah. worried about Corey Feldman. What's wrong? It's uh it, two two number uh, remember two two two. Yeah. Just refer simply to Corey Hames' favorite number. What? He had a favorite number. A three digit favorite number? You gotta be a fucking world class dildo <laughs> to have a favorite number. By the way. But also to stretch your favorite number to three digits. <laughs> three digits. You're being a little you greedy. You can't find a number that fucking suits you to be your favorite in a hundred numbers. What about two? Derek Jeter. No. Twenty-two. Emmett Smith. Well, here's the thing. No. <laughs> two, two, two. Two. Get this, bro. Two, two. You sitting down? Yeah. Throw one more two on that. Where? Uh, Where is it going to go? Uh, oh, right, right in my end. heart? Yeah, right on the end, right in your heart. <laughs> As if to never be upstaged or fucking shove his own cock in any situation. Uh, two, two, two is right in reference to Corey Hames' favorite number, which uh, is two, 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 and that Corey Feldman has pointed out for years now how eerily similar it is to his own favorite number. <laughs> okay, hold on. Wait, let me sit down. You sitting down? Yeah. Good. Good. Take the mic over there with okay. you. Yeah, I'm just yeah. happy you're sitting down. This is a lot. Yeah. There's been a lot of pen action today. I felt a lot of blood leave my head, too. Okay. Might be the pen. Might be this knowledge. It's eerily close to Corey Feldman's favorite number, which is simply 22. What? Wait, what? Yeah. Dude, seriously? By the way, if you told what? me two people... Two jerk off should have hung out together more in the world. Forget how eerily close numbers are. If you find me two dudes who have a favorite number, yeah. I swear to God, become best friends for life. I feel like that knowledge, you know, in war movies where you see the bullet kill two guys, that's what should have happened. We shared a lot, man. Uh, fa we both are guys who love numbers, and we had a favorite. Uh, producer Cox, we yeah. also split a few of those. It's crazy. We also had a number of blinks that we would communicate in. Well, we found out if the one of us, like, were, if one of them it? worked the balls, the other one worked the shaft. They only had to give a couple blowjobs. That's today. hilarious because they're standing in line to get molested, and they're like, "I only like working shaft. I only work balls. What's Look. your favorite number?" <laughs> <laughs> Quick, what's your favorite number? Twenty-two. <laughs> what? what? Shut up, dude. Dude, I'm freaking out. My hands are shaking. Look right now. Look at me. Now we're going to be finishing each other's Sub producer blowjobs. Sorry. Cum shots. Cum facials. Oh. The lives of the bonfire hosts are an open book, and so are those of the crew. It's not always easy sharing your private lives on the air. On this day, producer Lou Witzke would learn that black is the new orange. Oh, DJ Lou and his girlfriend, who just loved black dick. Man, such a fun subject, so much fun. Everyone in the studio, the, the energy was good. And then, of course, in walks Dan, and he, at this point, he's just abusive. The drugs, are, at best, are only making him feel normal, just getting him through the day. But he was withdrawn, and at this point, the whole thing was a shit show. It was falling apart, and I thought, at the very least, maybe we could... Pull it together for a few minutes, try to cheer up Lou. Bonfire host, Dan Soder. I don't know why he was trying to cheer Lou up. I mean, yeah, sure. His girlfriend's fucking a bunch of black dudes. Boo-hoo. I got open veins just pouring out toxins and other shit. I don't even know. But hey, right, get that money, Lou. Is that even a real thing? I don't know. I'm in a much better place now. Lou, was your ex uh, a garbage animal in the sack? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. 
Bad parenting? No, great parents. Okay, and, yeah, I you, think it can go that way too. And you I met just wonder dad. why. You like, met the dad. Yeah, yeah. Several times. You've been together for a long time. He's like, hello, he hello, You're still broken Lou. up, right? Yes. Okay. Very nice to meet you, Lou. Is this my little daughter you're taking out? It's very nice to have a white man come home instead of a oh, Schwarzer oh for Thanksgiving for a God, change. I'll tell you this right now. I can't leave the room without her changing it to an NBA game. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every, every Hanukkah, Lamar. And <laughs> it's finally nice to have a Yom Kippur with a man who looks like the challah bread we're about to eat. <laughs> I'm sick of this pump and nickel bread coming, if you know what I mean. You're a good guy. You're Dad, a this is my new boyfriend, Lou. He's a DJ and a moil. And a moil, but you're going to love him. He does christenings, but don't let that bug him. <laughs> Every holiday she comes Hi. home with another one of these rattlesnake dicks. Hi, Gavalt, I'll tell you this. I've had more black dick dunked in my fucking toilet water. <laughs> hey, honey, who burnt the brisket, eh? Uh. Who's this fella? <laughs> I didn't know my daughter was into the end cuts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she likes it a little dark. <laughs> Who's got to go outside of his ex-girlfriend's window and yell at her on Yom Kippur? <laughs> I know she's got to be home. Who's out there with you? Which one is it? <laughs> Which one of them? Odell Beckham. <laughs> Give me an autograph. <laughs> Who's up there, Mookie Wilson? So, you so much. Uh, you, old old uh, Mets. You tell me, yeah, <laughs> Daryl Strawberry. He's maybe sad at eighty-seven. Which one of them's up there with you? Is it Doc Gooden? Keith Hernandez. I know he's not black, but he's an ethnic. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, Mookie Wilson's the best one. Yeah, Mookie Wilson's best. What do you think of this sucking off Mookie Wilson? <laughs> I gave you the best kiss of my life. <laughs> drunk Lou drunk Lou outside of his girlfriend's house on Yom Kippur. Bonfire producer, Lou Whiskey. I know what they were trying to do, but it actually made me feel a whole lot worse. Before this I thought everybody's ex girlfriend dated people of different colors. Uh, they found it funny. I found it kind of hurtful. Kind of hurt a lot. It hurt a lot. If producer Lou Witzke thought discussion of his personal life was over, the relief was short-lived. With Bonfire host Jay Okerson at his wit's end and out of control, Dan Soder would reveal a recent discovery about Lou Witzke that would shake the very foundation of the show to its core. Oh, the Lou stew, but yeah, Lou, we find out, is a, uh, is a twin. He's a twin. He's got a brother who looks exactly like him. Uh, we named Stu. Still not quite sure what his actual name was. I, uh... I said I wasn't going to do this. Because I, I had a brother, too. His name was Dan Soder. He's so lost. Uh, I didn't know if it was the drugs. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. But all of a sudden, there's another Lou. Uh, you know... It really fucks some shit up. Uh, I think he might have a brother. Again, the, the time period is real blotchy for me. But I just remember them telling me that there's another Lou. And at this point, I'm sleeping on the streets. Uh, I'm getting fights with other bums. It was it was real messy. But, I mean, to toot my own horn, but I, I did show up every day for work, even with my massive problem. So Yeah, so the guys found out that I have a twin brother, which I do. And they named him Stu. His name's not Stu. I guess they're just saying that because it rhymes. And then every time I text them when I'm drunk, I become Stu. Oh, here's another drunk text from Stu. Stu is the evil version of me, but he's also my twin brother. And that's not his name. Yeah, it gets confusing to me, too. It doesn't make any sense, and I don't know why we do it. But it rhymes. Dude, I found this out on Instagram no more than 36 hours ago. Mm -hmm. Sleepy in bed, fully boned up. Ooh. I'm checking Instagram. Mm -hmm. I go through it. What are you looking for all boned up? I just go through Instagram. This is morning wood. I had to pee. So I'm on Instagram, and I scroll down, and I see a picture of Lou. And did you know this? Twin brother. And no idea. You had no idea. I'm going to show you. Really? Yeah. Lou's got a twin brother that looks just like him? He looks. It's $100 twin dollars activate. In the form of super producer. What does he do, Lou? He's a bartender. Lou, is that you in the tie-dye? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> See, you don't know which one's which. Well, no, just because like the uh, look at this one. His twin brother dresses like Lou, and Lou's not dressed like Lou in that picture. That's why I always assume that Lou books two gigs a weekend. <laughs> he does like a bar mitzvah and a christening, and they both DJ it. Can I do my? Uh, I've been watching Breaking the Magician's Code uh, on Netflix. <laughs> okay. And Lou, can you be a part of my thing where it looks like you're over there, then you're over here, but it's just you and your brother? <laughs> I think th I like that for your second hour special. You're gonna add illusion. <laughs> Just an illusion. He goes, "Hey everyone, you know super producer Lou, yeah. and then uh, he's in uh, behind this curtain. No, he's over here. Ah, hey, where is he? He's omnipresent. Just the two. Are you guys very close? We've been together since the womb. We still live together. Really? Oh, really? No shit. Yeah. That's kind of. Do you guys weird. fight a lot? No, we get along great. Have you ever had a fist fight with him? Oh, we had one. The last one was one right around the time of this picture, like when we were twenty-one. He put he put the cigarette out in your cat. <laughs> I, he was cool your, astray, your, bro. your brother's your brother's whacking down a camel light, and you're holding a baby kitten. It's and, literally two different personalities. You guys never played any games with chicks before, huh? <coughs> no, we're too jealous. We're jealous. Wow, of each other. You guys don't like seeing each other get laid. Yeah, no. Takes time away from each other. <laughs> hey, stop hanging with me. He's my twin brother. Hey, I got a girl coming over. He's like setting up NHL on PlayStation. Like, what? But I thought, girl, it's, it's bro night. <laughs> we always bro out Tuesdays through Saturdays. Uh, every Thursday night, we play video games, and, and then we lay on the floor in the exact same position we were in mom's stomach in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's bath time. <laughs> you guys just bath time. <laughs> Bert and Ernie. <laughs> He's laying, so I imagine they're like on the carpet, like how they were laying in the stomach, and like him wrapped around it, like the way twins are in the stomach, where they're like, oh, next to each other. I wish your brother was like a like a serial killer, like he turns out to Billy B. Evil Lou. Oh, God, Evil Lou. Like you love, like, let's take minutes after this picture that he went and like killed that cat in front of you. Yeah. Uh, I never found that cat. <laughs> hey, you, hey, bro, you seen my cat? No, what? You got a cat? Mittens, I love her. Oh, no, I just got to go out for this uh, for this pack of cigarettes. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, uh, I really saw you, you had a good bond with that cat. <laughs> Your parents never mistook you at all? They knew who was who always. My Have they ever fucked up? They my tagged mom's you. Getting, my mom's getting old. She never, uh, she doesn't get it right ever anymore. If I shake marks you one and two on your foreheads, yeah, it's a marker when you come in. She stamps your hand like it's a club. She's like, she's just an old grizzled lady. She goes, "All right, you two are freaking me out. I'm gonna fucking label you. Hey, Lou, you one, you listen, two. I had too much gin before noon. <laughs> or you're both here. I gotta get the bingo. I don't have time to figure all this horse shit out. Lou, you one, will you two? All right, raise your hand if you Lou. Good job, Mama loves you. <laughs> <laughs> Who's my bubbler? Get over here, bubbler. <laughs> Will came out of me first. You get the first kiss of the night. Look at those bottoms. Look at that, huh? Now one of you two fanooks gonna go out there and get a girlfriend and stop living with each other like you're 15 uh, years old. Which one of you has the girlfriend that loves the blacks? <laughs> Lou lost his girlfriend back to the black D pool. <laughs> That's my fault. <laughs> You know she's not going to stay hitched down when it's almost draft season for the NBA. What? You get lottery picks around there. <laughs> There's lo these, all these long bodies with powerful penises. <laughs> this is her season. Young, dumb, full of semen. And also can nail a 25-foot J. <laughs> <laughs> Lou, you've never been a ball player. <laughs> Your fundamentals are what your fourth grade basketball coach called an abomination. <laughs> <laughs> your outside shot, abysmal. <laughs> you, you have no what Jay Billis calls upside. <laughs> Americans were not forewarned about the performance of Corey Feldman and his angels on the Today Show. Even by this time, Corey experts, Big J and Dan, were caught unaware. But with a now clean and sober Dan Soder showing up for work, the two comrades were riding high again and dove into their analysis of the Feld Dog's historic performance with gusto. And as Dan Soder would now say, with a little grace from above. Oh, man. Corey Feldman on today's show, that just really, it puts a smile on my face even talking about it right now because that was, uh, I mean, such a hilarious, ridiculous bit. And it was for the first time in a long time where I just saw Dan, like my Dan Soder was back. I think he kicked all the drugs at this point. He'd made amends. We've had a lot of talks at this point. We had lunch. 
and really just hashed everything out. I mean, when you love somebody like a brother like that, you forgive and forget very easily. And what better way to just bring two people together than just laughing at the delusional outlook of another uh, Corey Feldman on the Today Show. We met up for lunch uh, probably at my worst moment in the East Village, and, and Jay told me either it was get clean or, or or get off the radio show, and I knew I didn't want to lose it. And uh, uh, Jay had to go real quick from lunch, and I remember he got up. And I thought he left something behind, and he, and he did, and it was an Evanescence CD. Uh, I didn't know about much about it, but I listened to it and I, I found solace in their words and it, it pulled me to a good place and I got clean. I, I hadn't used for about, you know, 90 days and then the Corey Today Show episode kind of was just, it was, it, was the, it was us. It was back to what it was. It was, the, it was the stairs at the cellar. It was bowls in the afternoon. It was all white guy five on five on 2K17 or 16. I don't know. I was on a lot of drugs after that. But it was us. And it was good. Well, here's the great thing is we got, Jay and I both got a group text from Sal that said, hey, Corey Feldman's on the Today Show. <laughs> yeah. And then immediately, and Jay and I have been talking about this all afternoon, we're, the bonfire's built itself into kind of like a, a felled dog expert. Somehow. So if, somehow. So if like, you know, like in Outbreak movies where a disease hits, yeah. and they're like, we've got two scientists in Switzerland that are working on it. <laughs> Jay and I are those scientists. That's it. So now they bring him in, there's like a chopper where it's like... And we get off into a big field, and I'm like, I'm Dan Soda, that's Big Jokerson. Show us where Feldog bombed. Oh, we, need, we need to see. The Just said, don't touch you. You didn't contaminate this goddamn scene, did you? We've been tracking him for over 15 years. Um, well, he's on a track, and the thing is, he did like seem to have an interest in coming on this show. Yeah, to promote his album. At one point, to promote his stuff, because you know, people were t tweeting at him and, and involving us and everything from the ball busting we do. And uh, we made a decision as a group, actually, the whole crew here kind of was like, ah, let's not do that because I do respect him enough, and I mean that, like, from the work he's done that I love. Goonies. He's, he's, my, favorite, Boy. he's my favorite Goonie. And I don't want to know him. I'd rather just be able to laugh like everybody else to think. But there is always a tinge of, like, you don't want to fly too close to the, to the Feldman sun. <laughs> but, there, <laughs> but, there's a, but there is a, 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 a tinge in me still that, like, while this world, we're, we're going to, I'm assuming we're going to laugh wildly over this next two hours but <laughs> i hope one of us is actually blown away in by a the good performance because i'll tell you this jacob came in he did and jacob came in and i don't know if it's just too weathered like one of those cops that they make watch pedophilia where you just come in that wasn't like, even all that bad yeah we were like come in you're like oh my god you're a monster now but he came in and he goes it's not that i, I think we watched way worse stuff i think we <laughs> i think we've seen way worse and that's the thing now look the world is not like us going on YouTube to find him performing uh, uh, lip Bud, singing on qualified. Evening at the Improv in 1987. <laughs> yeah. he did, not too many people have seen Bud Freeman introduce him into his song, What's Up With The Youth. <laughs> We've teased it. We haven't watched it. By the way, that needs to be said. Jay and I avoided watching it. Very purposefully. You've seen the video. Yeah, I've seen it. You saw the performance. Everyone's seen the performance. Do you want to start doing over-unders on Michael Jackson moves? We start taking a little side action? Why would we ever take a bet on this? Oh, on before how long it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say before any lyrics. Any lyrics? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In fact, dude, I swear to you, I would bet my daughter's soul on it. I like how he tries to explain the album. Like, it's going to be like a very, like, the, the concept is going to be like... Layers. Really, <laughs> layers. Oh. Layers. And he goes, well, that's the whole concept of the album. Good versus bad. <laughs> it is a, it, 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 <laughs> you really went deep on that one. I don't it mean, is, I don't mean to mind is, fuck you guys By here. the way, it is a concept album, and it is two discs. We watched his GoFundMe a while back when yeah. he presents it. It's a double album of music that has to get out there. Can you rewind a little bit, though? Because I want to hear him talk about good versus bad. Reaper look going on. In the <laughs> I don't like yeah, it. I don't like this interaction. <laughs> well, I no, you know, it's all actually the whole theme of the uh, the album is good versus evil, heaven versus hell, all that sort of thing. So wh why this concept? Uh, well, probably because I know that probably. angels have probably saved me once or twice in my life, and oh. I like helping them as well. That's why I created Corey's Angels as a way to help girls who are like kind of lost and needed. Do so you to think find two women wearing to... angel wings pulled him out of being cornholed by some executive when he was younger? Is yeah. that what happened? Yeah, he was just on so much Molly that he was like, "Are you angels? Like, no, we're, <laughs> we're nurses, and we're sewing your asshole show. Oh, Do any of you guys play slap bass? <laughs> yeah, I need someone with a funky groove." <laughs> is Corey's Angels a, a charity or something? No, it's where he lets women move into his house. 
And uh, oh, being stop, Matt. Hey, you want to live in a moderately sized nice home? Want to live in a McMansion and play bass, <laughs> play guitar? Do you know how to play bass? Hey, neither did Nikki <laughs> Six when he started Molly Crew, but you already got the look. And you just got your first piece of LA knowledge. Get in the car. It's a Kia. <laughs> <laughs> now, the first night, you just have to blow me. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be in an assassin pretty good. We'll talk, we'll talk Kitar later. Kitar's more th month three of being a Corey's angel. Let me take off all of my chain mail. <laughs> you ever fucked a night? <laughs> little more ball work, little less Kitar talk, all right? All right, yeah, now we'll get to the music. Fun now, out first. Now, if you could call me Sir Fell Dog while we're fucking. <laughs> we do. We try to help them make their realities, you know, their dreams. And you he helps run away. He helps, he helps run away girls. That, right? That's what he's saying. Yes, and none, he of, none, of, none of his angels happen to be guys that he's like helping out. Also, who are lost soul. He takes in lost soul, young, pretty girls. Just angels, not male. And he also said he helps make their realities their dreams. <laughs> he's, and right next to that girl was a, was a was a homeless kind of schlubby fat girl. Yeah. And he goes, "Get away from me, demon! I'm here <laughs> for this angel. <laughs> she needs to pull me out of heaven. What are you? <laughs> what are you gonna do? You're just gonna eat me right back in the head." Hell. Look at you. You're one of Satan's creatures. <laughs> There's so. going to be some MJ moves coming here in a minute. Um, There's a kind of combo No MJ moves. moves. No, yeah, oh, they call them on it. Similar style of dance. You rip we off my dancing shirt. together. So okay. he was my idol, obviously, and a lot of my influences. So we get to that. You we grew, we grew up about dancing together. Oh, you were in Jackson 5? How old were you? <laughs> were Jackson 5 when he was a small child? You remember? It was me, Tito, Jermaine. <laughs> they just, all his handlers tell him that he was in Jackson 5. Was making up names. Teddy, Flip. <laughs> How many is that? Seven? Well, we got to get three more. Uh, five was ironic. Bruce, there was, Bruce. Yeah. Earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> Just when you think it's all over, no hope in life, so what you gonna do? By the way, I've written similar, if not better, lyrics in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd be honest with you. Similar buzz. <laughs> I also like, he's like, I take these lost souls and I give them a better life and treat them. And then I make them go on national TV for morning moms wearing fucking pussy lip showing. Uh, garter, you know, garter belt dresses. Yeah, for all their moms that are watching it before they go to work. Look, your angels are okay. They're under the fell dog <laughs> umbrella. Turns out we got a pretty lax dress code right here. <laughs> <laughs> got, got a pretty erotic dress code. These aren't. Co these is where I found these girls passed out on Molly <laughs> in the down by La Brea. Oh. oh. We're not gonna stop until we reach the top. Top of where? He also can't, like, he's he's not a good singer. No, he's doing that thing where you just talk it out. He's like, like we're getting so high. Yeah. To get big to get fly high. I love that it just keeps showing over the angels thing. It's early morning New York City, people going to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're like, hey, I just think I saw fucking Corey Feldman dancing like fucking, an asshole. And he's that fucking fell dog. I can't tell. He's dressed like Assassin's Creed. I gotta go work on the new building on 59th. Who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> Some guy hanging off a girder. Yeah. Hey, anyways, I was on my way to work today. And uh, fucking Feldman. I think I found my daughter who ran away playing <laughs> keyboards with like Corey Feldman. She wouldn't hear me. I said, Sarah. I screamed it 17 times through the glass. This bitch is yelling back, I'm an angel now. Yeah. I go, get your fucking ass in the Buick. Your mother has a drinking problem because you ran away. Your fucking fungal scars in the booch. Yeah. You piece of strum of bush. <laughs> that all day. <laughs> you treat me like a fungal in the boots. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm real nervous about this move because he's bracing. Yeah. Look oh, shit. Nervous. I didn't realize. He's po he better do a two and a half with a pike. <laughs> oh, no. He really went tight legged on it. Oh, Is no. he going to backflip in oh. fucking Ichabod Crane shoes? <laughs> Whatever's next. Do you know I cannot <laughs> wait for it. You know, also, you can tell that everything, all, every ounce of rehearsal practice and choreography, he just did alone in his bedroom. Oh, yeah. You, you can tell. Like, there was a definite <laughs> candlestick involved. <laughs> Yeah. And practicing this performance. But whatever's coming here, this is going to be the dirty dancing lift of this routine because he's doing, he's, he's doing the exhale first. Like, you could do this, CF. Fell <laughs> <laughs> dog gotta eat. Fell <laughs> 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 dog gotta eat. <laughs> 
Choke slam, Ryu Ryu. Tarnish you, try to abolish you. Uh. Spin your good deeds until they become bad Oh, bad become, news. Beca- bad news? Spin, spin, spin your good deeds until they become bad news. Is that what it is? Bad yeah. news. Back up a little bit. I again, also heard bad again, news. Again, in that sentence, you'll notice the theme, good and bad. Oh. Spin your good deeds until they become bad news. Yeah, we, should have, we definitely should have done mushrooms before we watched this <laughs> goes, video. Until they become <laughs> bad news. In the early days of the bonfire, Dan and Jay would be introduced to their next door studio mates, Debbie Doniger and Ben Shear of the Golf Channel. After seeing the fair Doniger doing push ups outside the bonfire studio and Ben Shear looking on, the two Comedy Central radio hosts' fascination with the golf experts would grow and grow. But it wasn't until January 2016 when Big Jay Okerson and Dan Soder would learn that Orange is the new black. Oh, man. Well, uh, pranking the golf channel. What a fun bit. And what a, what a non-aggressive but also like silly way to have fun. A very Christian way to have fun, which is what I liked, which is, which is you know, treating your neighbors how you want to be treated, which is silly. I, I like to be silly, and, and I was, you know, a youth minister at this point. I had been clean for... 12 years, uh, my gorgeous wife had two just brand new babies, and it, I was living for God, I was living for Christ, and I was living for the bonfire. Uh, Jay was withdrawn. Uh, I was afraid he was following a, a darker path. We're, 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 I remember this. We're like fucking around with the golf channel. Like the golf channel. Why am I wasting my time with the golf channel? They're, they should be excited that they're sitting across the room from us, if I'm being honest. And now we're going to waste our time getting involved with them. But, like, you know, I guess Dan wanted to do it or something. And I'm not here. I'm not trying to make waves or anything. But it's, and at the end of the day, I don't have any time to prep for the show. I'm busy. I'm like a busy guy. Uh, I feel like between Christine and Jacob, Lou, Dan, like, you guys got it, man. I'm showing up, right? I'm here. I'm showing up for the thing. Uh, what do you want? I'm, uh, my name's on the show. Uh, we're moving units. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Show some goddamn respect. I'm out there. I'm out there turning and burning. I'm the reason they're coming back. These people are tuning in every day. The demand's high because of me. I'm not taking any more money than anybody. I'm just I'm, I'm putting in my work like everybody else. But it's like, show the respect. Oh, awesome. Jay just waved at Ben, and Ben just itched his head. He, he almost went to wave and stopped himself from waving to itch his head. And now he's shutting the curtains on the studio. Do we have an enemy? They hate us. They hate us? You know that for a fact, Jacob. You're nodding oh, your head. I'm agreeing. You're just assuming. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we find out. just shut the curtains. <laughs> Jacob, I swear it's to God. It's a golf show. What are Jacob, they doing in there? <laughs> Jacob, I swear to God. nudity on the Today Show for the first time. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to show you guys how I squirt with a tea box. <laughs> with a tea pencil. You want to see me fire teas out of my sniz for a half hour? <laughs> like a crossbow. Boom. Do you think Ben's... Uh, like a guy. You got him see an orange. <laughs> <laughs> he was wearing a fleece, and he has an orange parka also. Oh, that's fantastic. And without a doubt, I would say Jacob is a general in the bonfire army. Without a doubt. And we have campers that are devoted soldiers. Special ops, if you will. We have one on the phone. Where mm-hmm. is he at? A caller wants me to know. Oh, so he's not even on the phone? No, he just wanted me to let you guys know. He's he didn't want to give away his information. Show. Right, he's going to call the golf show. I mean, we got How are we going to know it's him? Are we going to get a crackle crackle? No, he's going to call and ask Ben why he always wears orange. Right. But I want to oh, hear that. Why have we not thought about this? Let's right. have a bunch of callers call them and ask questions only they, that we can get answers to. <laughs> Dude, oh, this is First great. of all, let's find the golf show's uh, number. Yeah, 1 800 so swing. <laughs> so we can put that out there. 1 800 <laughs> swing low. <laughs> <laughs> Do the noise. I love Lou's fucking sound effect. one eight eight eight. nothing else is on <laughs> <laughs> That shit makes me laugh for no fucking that's reason. Fucking, that's a, that's not even a slice. That's dead on, They got connected. Can three people call back, and, and after you ask your whatever fake golf question is, say, seriously, Ben, what's with the orange? If we could have a bevy of those going, that'd be great. But let's yeah, get some, let's get some I, I feel like if you can do a different version of the orange thing, I myself, yeah, I myself am a caution yellow guy. Like, why'd yeah. you go orange? Yeah, 
Katie in California, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, perfect. Oh, we have yeah. our we have our soldier. Okay, then let's move along here. Let's talk about golf. No, Katie on the line from California. Mm. Hello. Hello. Hey, Katie. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Happy New Year. Good. Happy New Year to you too. So I was calling to talk about my resolution and my goals for this year. And you know, one of them was to get in shape. I guess I heard like one of the previous. Um, people who called in and um, golf is actually something that I've kind of taken up recently to try and do that. So, um, you know, I've been dating and trying to meet the right guy and I uh, haven't really had any luck, you know, being kind of promiscuous and getting around a little bit, you know, but um, I figured maybe meeting somebody in golf would help me meet a decent guy. And um, I guess my question to you guys was, is golf a good way to catch some D? <laughs> <laughs> I love these comedy well, sense. Well, you surely made I mean, my co laugh. Why, why doesn't everybody just from the other side and the other side just come in here and join us? Wait, but no, but wait look, a promiscuous second. golf would be good. We would like that, you know? Wait you know a second. This, is, this could be a, a bigger question to answer, and I would say <laughs> that you could definitely meet some cool people, regardless of you yeah. know, your persuasion, out on the golf course. What better way to spend four and a half, five hours with somebody that you might like or not like, and you can really get to know that person on a golf course. And there's lots of dudes there, and they can buy you drinks afterwards. I mean, really. Right? I mean, at least you know. Better, you know. Yeah, you can buy them drinks right? afterwards, whatever, right. <laughs> whatever you want to do. But, yeah, there's lots of dudes playing golf, so if you're looking for guys, you know, that might be the spot to be. And, you know, if you play promiscuous golf, you might even do better. So yeah. enjoy it. All right. Anything that involves balls, I'm, I'm down. Actually, for all the listeners out there, we are right next door to Comedy Central, and we've kind of befriended them, and they like to uh, play, uh, I, don't know, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> have, us come, have us come on their show. <laughs> Should we say we go on Comedy Central occasionally with the guys across the hall? They're very fun and funny, and they should just leave everything in their room. <laughs> <laughs> They're so listening to me. They are listening and actually broadcasting and listening to our show. At the same time. We're still doing it. We're still doing it, Katie. <laughs> Katie, you still We're moving forward, we say. No, they're actually pretty funny guys. Awesome guys. They do a funny show. They're funny guys. And, uh, oh, thanks. You know. Shout out to Jacob over there. Oh! Oh! Uh, I don't think they. What, have... what goes on with the saying? What stays in Vegas stays in Vegas. What stays in that room over there? That's studio. Stays in studio eight. Just stay in studio eight. Stay in studio eight. Yeah. They hang up on her. Oh, Katie. Yeah. Katie. You are the best. You Killer. are. That was. Uh, yeah. No Katie, shit. there you go. I'll give you a what a there. beautiful woman, inside and out. Oh my God! Oh, hey, that was <laughs> good, you soldier. Were, you were fantastic. And you know what? Can I just say this? Your stealth and prowess, and the way you you just composed yourself, you did great. And you know, I'm gonna say this. Shout out to Jacob's lady, Deb, for handling that. Like, oh, Deb do really came through. Right. Deb do. I think Debbie does indeed like us. Yes, and I tell you this, I think old Chester Cheeto over there likes us. <laughs> <laughs> I think mean, he's starting to warm up to the boys from the bonfire. <laughs> Old Cheeto comes. <laughs> or she should, if it, if the dick bounce, there she is! Uh, yeah! Debbie D! Debbie D! Yeah! You're so hot. Get in here! She's coming in. She's coming in. Debbie D! Totally on air, dude. Uh, Debbie D! Debbie! Oh, yeah, that was us. <laughs> that was our She's a general in the army now. Dude, I told her she can be guys or whomever. Oh, no, Debbie. I was just praising your broadcasting abilities to go right into that. Debbie, you were golden, by the way. You were yeah. absolutely fantastic. We, I, I don't know if you heard me yell out because I was like, Deb, because you nailed it during the phone call. You did nail it. And one of these days, Deb, you're going to have to come in and sit on Jacob's back while he does push ups. Come on. It would right. mean the world to him. It would mean the world to him. Then there's a ceasefire till then. Look at her. Oh, oh wow. thanks for running. She gets hotter as I see her, huh? Holy shit. She's a cutie. Wow. When Behind the Bonfire continues, an incident in the nation's capital sparks the trial of the century and divides a country. Christine got lit up drunk. Lit up drunk. I hate drunk, Christine. Welcome back to Behind the Bonfire. Things had spilled over. Uh, the milk was on the floor, as they say. Shit had gone 
bad. I, I had flocked a little too much to the church, but Jay was a different guy. He was unreachable. Even Christine couldn't talk to him. Sunglasses while he slept, while he showered, while he shit. It was nonstop. As he called it, the Jay show? Well, I think, you know... The hectic hustle bustle of my life starting to pour some water on the bonfire there. So I'm like, how do I come down, help these kids out, give the show a shot in the ass again? I'll bring my personal business into it. Of course, what's going to be more interesting about what's going on behind the scenes of my world, my crazy shit at this point, the money's, I mean, coming in. It, it, I can't even spend it fast enough. Uh, it's raining pussy everywhere I go. Um, gifts, traveling. Just spending time with celebrities. Kevin Hart's calling me again. Things are getting pretty crazy for me. And it's like, I'm starting to feel resentment coming my way from these guys. Like, hey, hey, Dan Soder. Am I saying that right? Soder? Jay Okerson's with you now, okay? So sit back, let me take the wheel, and you just enjoy the spillover, huh? Oh, yeah, and then uh, Christine. You know, I let her live in my place. So... She's coming to me all half-cocked. <laughs> Bitch, there's 50 more like you waiting outside. It was, a real, it was really hard to be on a radio show with a guy that you can't talk to. He's got a harem of different women now. Christine's sleeping in the same bed at him, but they're surrounded by all these strippers that just sleep around him like a pit of snakes. And, and, and he wouldn't return my calls. He, he was always bad with texts, but this was a different thing. He made a all Madden team of just Jays. So when I went over to play them, it was all 99s and they were all Jay Okersons. All of them. Even the punters and kickers. It was fucking weird. And the trial just set it off. In 2016, Bonfire host Big J Okerson was performing in Washington, D.C. to an enthusiastic crowd just out to enjoy a night of comedy. All was well in the nation's capital. Okerson, enjoying a meet and greet with his fans backstage after the show, had no idea that his world was about to change forever. Oh, I mean, probably uh, what I can only call the real boiling point of the bonfire was the trial. With his girlfriend Christine Evans by his side and drinking like a fish, the two were greeted by an old boyfriend of Evans. And with several beverages consumed and acting like a sloppy drunk, Christine let slip a fact about her old flame that would shake Okerson to his core. With his stand-up honed on BET and in black comedy clubs across the nation, Big J's fan base was rooted in the African-American community. This white boy just titty fuck my butt cheeks. Leg a lamb, leg a lamb. It is said that when the community heard Christine's affront, they let out a sympathetic and collective, oh, it stuck. Anytime a supporter of Okerson spoke about the DC incident, from then on, he would be affectionately referred to as OJ. With the country divided along racial, gender, and size queen lines, justice was demanded. From justice to the black community. From justice to the black community. And the trial of the century was about to begin. Accused of attacking Jay's manhood and a trial date set. Christine Evans would need a defense attorney. Comedian and defense attorney for Christine Evans, Bonnie McFarlane. Well, I remember getting a call from Christine, and she was very distraught. And she explained to me what happened, and then she said one thing I'll never forget. She said, Bon, I need you. And that's when I knew I had to take the case. Plus, you know, it would give me a chance to make dick jokes about Jane. It was crazy. The crowds outside the building were huge, like Christine's old boyfriend. They demanded blood. It was June 6th, D-Day. Or in Jay's case, not as big a D-Day. Sorry, Jay. What you are witnessing is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in a New York moral court. Both parties have agreed to dismiss their court cases and have their dispute settled here in our forum, the Bonfire Court. 
I'm Dan Lou Soder, and welcome to the Bonfire Court. A couple on a weekend out of town, when an old fling enters the scene. Her vodka-soaked anxiety center on a rambling tirade as public as a county fair, catapulting the mood from light-hearted fun to awkward tension. She said she was only drunk, babbling. He says she was completely retarded. Were her soggy soliloquies justified, or is she just a loose-lipped lush? We'll find out in the case of the Green Room Guffaw. This is the plaintiff, Jay Okerson. He is suing the defendant for public embarrassment while being drunk. He says she was out of line when a past lover was hanging out and she fawned over his sexual prowess and dick that she proclaimed that night is bigger and better than his. The plaintiff claims the defendant used that information to demoralize him in front of fans, friends, and strangers. He is suing her for her own public humiliation and $100, the price of her booze tab that night. This is the defendant, Christine Evans. She claims she was only trying to lighten the mood and bring levity to an otherwise awkward situation. She is filing a countersuit stating that, well, I mean, his dick was bigger, so, you know, whatever. She's asking for the plaintiff to step up his dick game. Bailiff, Andy Fiore. The trial? Yeah, tensions were high that day. But, you know, as the bailiff, I was ready to do whatever I had to do. All rise! <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Also, now, I never said better. Now entering the court, <laughs> Honorable Judge Jacob. Oh. Thank you, everyone. Good stuff. Prosecution. <laughs> <laughs> you can see his face like, what should I say next? Fear. Yes. You will now present the prosecution's case. <sighs> well, uh, if anyone understands what it's like to be a stand-up comedian, try to get bookers on your side and fans alike, uh, you know it's a difficult road. It's fraught with a lot of failures, and uh, one thing you don't need is a girlfriend of yours telling a manager of a comedy club that you got a small dick, and you've been tossing her around everywhere you can. I spoke to one Melba, something, I don't know, whatever her name is, in uh, Washington, D.C., and she said she's not sure she could ever have Big J back in <gasps> the improv again. There's a dick limit. Ari was like a pit bull. He played the insecurities of the male caller, saying things like, if it's small, don't tell them all. And if the fingerless gloves don't fit, you must acquit. I'm here to prove today that Christine, not only wantonly, it's with an O, <laughs> <laughs> embarrassed my client, Big J. Orgeson, her loved one, but also that once she knew she was doing wrong, she continued down that path into an area that was so distressful to the client that he is now no longer the same quote-unquote man. Attorney for Big J. Okerson, comedian Ari Shafir. I remember that day. I remember that day. Bonnie McFarlane was a, was a tough uh, opponent, but um, there was no point where I doubted I'd win this case. There was no point where I doubted I'd win. Obviously, uh, women have it easy, so everyone wanted to vote for the women. Um, I didn't think that was enough to overwhelm the facts and the talent that I showed as attorney for Big J. I, I, if it would please the court, I would uh, like to take this time to ask for a continuance. Um, <laughs> That's already <laughs> sidebar. Totally. <laughs> to look over uh, my no, I just have I've had a very full day. <laughs> heavy docket. <laughs> Overruled. Okay. <clears throat> this case is about integrity. This case is about honesty. This is a case about the greatest girl in the world. Okay. It's Christine, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I thought it was you, yeah. there. No, I was like, Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> she's still active, even though she's had a child. Oprah? Yeah. <laughs> Christine might have... She did say the things that we're saying that she said. I'm not, I won't deny that here today. But she didn't intend for those things to hurt you. Uh, Big J. Just her being your girlfriend is is like a walking billboard that you have a big dick. And that's how she feels all the time, that she's always letting people know you have a big dick because here she is, a beautiful woman, dating you. 
who requires big dicks, apparently. No, she's... Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> she allows you to have uh, uh, sex with whoever you like. This is something I'm proving. She, you haven't proven any of this yet. She, she has threesomes if you want. She gives blowjobs uh, whenever you want. I hope that's true. Um, <laughs> she's with. A, she's always got like extra spit in her mouth for you. Oh my god! Like she, a chipmunk. It, yes, she's a great girl. And when people look at the two of you, they look at her and they look at you and they immediately think that guy must have a huge dick. So when she made that joke. And it was a joke. There's always honesty. There's always truth and humor. You know that as well as anyone. <laughs> she didn't think that it would hurt you the way that it did. Because you know she's always saying how great your dick is. Well, we've had an involved day here at uh, the bonfire court. We go now back to the finale of the trial of the week. Welcome back. To the bonfire court. I'm Dan Lusona. You always really switch gears great. Yeah, it really does. We found out a lot today. <laughs> we found out that Jay knows a joke. We found out Christine knows size. We found out that they're doing a lot of fucking in between. <laughs> Finally, we go to, instead of closing arguments, final statements from both the defendant and the plaintiff. We now return to the bonfire court. Christine, I believe was not joking. She was hammered. She gets in her own head. She gets wound up about shit. She had some, uh, it's not been brought up at all, but she has said over the course of the few weeks, maybe some inner resentment for some reason, uh, unbeknownst Here's to me. Say you're on, oh, no, no, no. Uh, well, she said it. Uh, yeah, could be some kind of resentment anger. There was a thing trying to take me down a peg for some reason. And all I did that weekend was bring my lovely girlfriend full paid trip down to Lovely Washington, D.C. Nation's capital. Nation's capital. Uh, also, food, drinks. And I don't... Uh, we have had conversations about her drinking before. However, I'm not an authority figure. I'm not an authority figure. I don't tell her what to do. She drinks whatever she wants to drink. I mean, she could do whatever it is she wants to do. And with that freedom... Except make fun of your dick. Giving, <laughs> I gave her a lot of rope. Or not a lot of rope, as this case would state. Rope means dick. Rope means dick, everybody. No. But, even, <laughs> but even with that little bit of rope, she chose to hang me with it uh, publicly in front of a bunch of people. I believe it was done with the intent to hurt... And uh, I believe for that, uh, I should win this case. Well, that's pretty gripping. Whoa. Gripping. Gripping indeed. I don't know where this... How did I do good? You did so good, dude. Are you proud of me? I'm very proud of you. Just, Tell Christine, in your best interest, I, I think it'd go. be best if you didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go. I no, no. Miss McFarlane. Mrs. McFarlane. Let her roll. <laughs> this is how it goes. Miss Evans. This is how crowd work works. Let them talk a bunch. Does the defense's case hold water? <laughs> okay. Even what, if though, what if Christine goes, pause attraction, everybody? Marks without pause attraction, which was not available on the 64 Buick Skylark. My And obviously, how could I be talking about someone sticking a green room if I haven't seen him in three years? I got drunk and fucked him without my knowledge, which shows I don't have dick memory. Is <laughs> Marissa Tomasio? God, I would love that. Christine, you have the floor. Okay. I wasn't trying to hurt you, Jay. I love you. Now I, you address the court. The court. I wasn't trying to hurt <laughs> Jay. I love him. I was just really trying to get ahead of, you know, being uncomfortable. The guys made comments about it. You know, Jay's made comments about it. the guys mentioned art that's on my wall. And it's almost like, hey, let me fucking make everybody else uncomfortable instead of taking that on myself. So oh. not a joke. <gasps> All right. Well. It was a joke. It was a joke. I was joking. Thank you. But. Oh. If the joke is a, if the joke is stating a fact, that's not technically a joke. No, that could still you be a joke. That could still be a joke. Christine, my intention. Still a joke. Honesty. What's the try truth to make, make people laugh? It's funny now, it's laughing true. at Jay's expense <laughs> is not something I should ever shoot for, no matter what. Sure, you can. You can laugh at my expense all you want. That wasn't a joke. That's all my point. You can laugh at my expense all you want. Make it funny. Can you imagine if Big Jay said? 
Oh, this girl, this ex girlfriend I had, what a great pussy she had. Her pussy was right so Right in front of you, her pussy was yours. better than yours. In front of you <laughs> and other people. We break I up. never That's said break better. Up. No matter what, you knew that his dick was bigger than yours because you made me tell you that information. No matter what, it doesn't well, matter that. Do no, it doesn't matter that you wanted that information. He is not better than you in any way, shape, or form. But the worst part True is he's not, being not. With he's not a better lover. He's not a better <laughs> comic. He's not better looking. Also, I never said better. By the sounds of him, he's of this by the by the sounds of him, he's five foot two, so he's all dick. So, <laughs> that's like I Joey was surprised. He fucked his leg. That's what turns out. Well, he's been taking in dick. scale. Well, hi, I'm Dan Lou Soder, <laughs> and this is the most intrigued I've ever been in my life. By the way, the Bonfire Court brought to you by Little Hug Fruit Barrels. <laughs> It's straight up diabetes in plastic. By the way, that is not Lil Hug. It is Little Hug. Well, right. you know it's probably okay, worse bro, than Lil Hug. I'm not trying to right. get sued, right. dog. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, I'm kind of excited for this. Yeah, let's hear what the caller We're going to go to the verdict to the Honorable Judge Jacob Bata. Christine. Bailiff, has the jury reached a decision? They have. <gasps> All right. <laughs> and the case between. Mr. Jason Okerson and Miss Christine Evans. The jury finds the defense overwhelmingly guilty. Oh. Guilty. There it is. There it is. Um, we get it. Ari's hugging I've his never won a case. <laughs> <laughs> never. But wait, guilty of what? Guilty. Of slander. Of slander. Being a soggy fucking not- whore in a green room, you that piece of shit. Right on that you. Christine was wrong. I think it proved it. I proved it to the American people. I proved it to Jay. I proved it to uh, to Christine. I even proved it to Jacob. People who doubted me a little bit. Christine was in the wrong, everyone. And I think now, um, I think now we know. I'm very happy for his family. I'm very happy. I'm also very happy. I think justice was served. As a society, we've moved on. We've moved on and we've grown from it. I think in the future... People like Christine need to be punished, not just with uh, shaming, but actually with lashes. I think we should bring back lashes for when she acts up like that. I still think she should give Jay freebies once in a while. Freebies. Uh, blowjob, come in the mouth. Uh, what, once a month on the road, he's real to get a blowjob, come in the mouth. That seems fair to me. To make up for what she did. Christine was convicted of shaming Jay's manhood in public. She was sentenced to letting Jay pick the next two girls for their threesome and picking the sleep number setting on their bed for four years. On the advice of my legal counsel, Bonnie McFarlane, I exercised my Fifth Amendment right. Also, I fell down the stairs. It's my fault. In the trial, I don't know. I think it was the thing that saved us in the end. Culture, sophistication, hallmarks of the bonfire. Howdy doody, homos. But at no time before, was this as evident as on Bonfire Theater? You know, as a man that struggled with his own demons and kind of had to find himself through a dark place like an addiction, when Jay was, I can only say, addicted to his own ego, addicted to money, addicted to the celebrity lifestyle. And they say that when someone's like that, you need to, the best way to show them is by watching them kind of come outside their own body and watch a reenactment. And I was hoping that's what the Bonfire Theater was going to do, was, you know, watching Jacob, who used to be an off-Broadway actor, and then to watch Christine, who we all know is great at Shakespeare, uh, to watch her just kind of blossom. Once she did, and I, I saw her act out, and it felt kind of right. Now, you know, a man comes to a point in his life where he realizes that he was wrong. And I was just being a, a first-rate ass, it turns out. It took our in-house thespians, Jacob and Christine, really to make me come outside myself and show me that. I've been uh, distant, removed in my own world, caring about the money, the pussy, the fast lifestyle. And you got to realize what grounds you. It's family. It's people. It's, it's, it's real. It's, it's, what's, it's what matters. Sure, the cars are great. The private jets. That's all great. But at the end of the day, they always say you're going to see the same people down as you saw on the way up. And <laughs> that was a tough fall for me that day. But I learned a lesson. Finally, I felt, though, I was back and the bonfire was ready to start rocking and rolling again. People have spoken that you guys do the diner scene for when Harry met Sally. So. And the role of Sally, and this is pretty progressive, will be played by Jacob Atat. 
Uh, are you ready to take on this role? I am. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> Romeo was a warm-up. Now you got to play Meg Ryan via 84. That's a, now, cute, that's a cute Meg Ryan. Now your palate's all lubed up. Yeah. Now you're ready. You're ready, ready to go. You stretch. Christine crushed that Shakespeare. <clears throat> awesome. Now let's see if you can handle Rob Reiner. a real actor <laughs> like Billy Crystal. Ooh, you've been crystal. <laughs> oh, bitch just got crystal. And now the Bonfire Theater presents When Harry Met Sally. It had to be you. So, what do you do with these women? You just get up out of bed and leave? Sure. Well, explain to me how you do it. What do you say? You'd say you have an early meeting, early haircut, or a squash game. You don't play squash. They don't know that. They just met me. That's disgusting. I know. I feel terrible. You know, I'm so glad I never got involved with you. I just would... I just would have ended up being some woman you had to... You have to get up out of bed and leave at 3 o'clock in the morning and clean your... What is that word? <laughs> and irons. And irons. And you don't even have a fireplace. Not that I would Not that I would notice. Why are you getting so upset? This is not about you. Yes, it is. You are a human affront to all women, and I am a woman. Hey, I don't feel... Hey, wait, wait, quick, quick, quick break. I feel like Christine's bullying Jacob cut, here. Cut. You're putting nothing into the... Uh, you're, you're doing it like a person sitting in an audition room where she's just, like, yelping back the words at you. You act, too. Poor Jacob. You're raking him over the coals here. I was acting. I was acting natural. You're going... Blah, 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 blah. You know what? Okay. Have a conversation. We're co-directors here, like the Wachowskis brothers. The sisters. The sisters. So I'm going to step in here and say, uh, Jacob, I need... Just exactly what you're giving right now. Christine, a little flowerier. I need 90% out of you. I need 90 more percent out of you. Okay, and you know what? I mean, he's a tough co-director, but I got to listen to him. All right, are we rolling? Take sound? It back, take it back to two sentences. Two sentences. Rolling sound. Speed. Sound speed. And action. Why Roll. are you getting so upset? This is not about you. Yes, it is. You are an affront to all women, and I am a woman. <laughs> hey, I don't feel great about this, but I don't hear anyone complaining. Uh, of course. Not, of course you're not. You're out. Of, you're out of the door too fast. I think they have an okay time. How do you know? What do you mean? How do I know? I know. Because they. Yes, because they. And how do you know they really? What are you saying? That they fake orgasm? It's possible. Get out of here. <laughs> Why? Most women, at one time or another, have faked it. Well, they haven't faked it with me. How do you know? Because I know. Oh, right. That's right. I forgot you're a man. What is that supposed to mean? Nothing. It's just that all men are sure it never happened to them and that most women at one time or another have done it. So you do the math. You don't think that I could tell the difference? No. Get out of here. <clears throat> Are you okay? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. Oh, you're right there. Oh, there. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'll have what she's having. Yeah! He ad libbed the right there. That's not in the script. Oh. <laughs> he, he, sold, he sold it. He bought into it. Bonfire executive producer, Jacob Patat. I thought I was going to be Harry. I wanted to be Harry. They made me be Sally. <sighs> Guys, against my legal counsel's advice, I'd just like to reiterate, I'm really good at Shakespeare. Oh, Dan Soder. Man, it was through hell and back, but how do you forge steel, Jay? You gotta bang it out. Gotta put it over some fire, bro. That's and, right. And when you put it over a bonfire, you know what you get? You get a blade as sharp as samurai's. Comedy swordsmanship. We decided now, why not just take the bonfire and go full acoustic? Go back to what we started it as, which is just two guys loving each other and making each other laugh. Forget about all the suits and the record deals and how the drugs and the women and the fist fights in the hotel rooms and the cities 
We didn't even know where we were half the time. Yeah, we're older, we're wiser, we're back together. I'm we're a grandfather. Good. My son has a son. <sighs> I'm taking him to Huey Lewis concerts now. Yeah. And that's where I want to be. It's fantastic. Jacob and Deborah happy up in New Hampshire. We've been able to really recapture the feeling of playing together again and how it felt like when we were just kids just noodling around the stairs of the comedy cellar. You know, I look across sometimes and I go, is it 2015? Because this sure shit feels like it. <laughs> oh, man. A couple years older, a couple new lines in the face, right? But here we are, still doing it the way we did it. That spice is still in that salsa. Here's the future of the bonfire, everybody. Going four days a week, coming at you There's real soon. Nothing bad could happen. And that's the story of two friends who became comedic partners who then became living legends. Their flames burned hot and in the process burned both men. But when all was said and done, it was friendship and a love of laughter that brought the two together. Now the future holds four days a week for the boys. Will they do show prep? Will they stop smoking pot? No. They both told me no. But 2017 will be a fun year for both men and campers alike. The bonfire burns on.